that today we've got a lot of uh, popular books that are saying there are new ancient books that have been discovered uh, that go right back to the time of, of Jesus and the apostles, supposedly, and they are uncovering a radical new view of Jesus. In other words, it's an alternative view that was circulating at the same time, so they're saying, look, you can choose this one versus the other one. And uh, talk a little bit about uh, what you found and, and how this hit you in terms of you realize you had to do more research. Yeah, I mean, as I began to read more and more about scholars who were claiming that these other Gospels, these alternative Gospels, are equally legitimate to the four Gospels we have in the Bible, and yet they present a far different picture of Jesus. Well, I had to check that out and find out that, whether that was true. When the Jesus Seminar, these radical left-wing scholars, produced a book called The Five Gospels, they included Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Thomas. Hello? Are you saying that that's equal to these other Gospels? Well, that's a big claim. So I had to find out, is there any historical evidence to back, it, back this thing up? Yeah, I like the quotes that you put at the top of the book, uh, in, or in this chapter of the book. Stephen L. Davies, who's a religion professor that usually writes in terms of the Gnostic uh, Gospels and so on, he said, For 1,900 years or so, the canonical texts of the New Testament were the sole sources of historically reliable knowledge concerning Jesus of Nazareth. That's true. But then he says, in 1945, this circumstance changed. What changed? Andrew Sullivan, another quote you've got in your book. There's a very important historical point here, which is that in the last 30 years, we have discovered real Gospels, hundreds of them, that are not the official Gospels, but that were part of the discussion in the early church. And yeah. it, like you say, what they're saying is, look, we found the, the, at Nagamati, we've got this Gnostic library, and some of these books, one of them being the Gospel of Thomas, goes right back to the time of Jesus and the Apostles. And like the Jesus Seminar are saying, this is, you know, at 50, okay? This would be before some of the other Gospels. And what they're doing is by pushing the dates back on some of these other Gospels that they're calling legitimate here, they're saying it presents a different view of Jesus. How different? Big time different. But they're saying that's an alternative view that's just as acceptable as your traditional and maybe should replace it. Yeah. Okay? Let's, let's start. We're, we're, we've got some of the, the top ones that are used in a lot of the media presentations and are, are wall-to-wall in the bookstores right now. And let's start with the Gospel of Thomas. Mm. All right, tell me the background of the Gospel of Thomas. Where did it come from? What is it? And why is this being touted so much? Well, it was interesting, John. Not long ago, I was on the East Coast, and somebody gave me a bulletin from a local mainline church. And I opened it up, and they had a responsive reading from the Gospel of Thomas. I mean, this is being used in churches. There is actually a, quote-unquote, Thomas church that is uh, in existence in Canada. So and we're seeing people gravitate toward this gospel. Why? Well, you know what? It's got a message that's contrary to that of the other gospels, and it's frankly a little more palatable for a lot of people. It says that Jesus is not the redeemer. He's a revealer. So it's a way we get salvation, if we get that, through self-discovery, through, through inner knowledge, through this finding this divine spark that's inside of us, just like it's inside of everybody, and, and, and the self-revelation and so forth. And, you know, this is more palatable to a lot of people than the fact I have to confess that I'm a sinner and it needs forgiveness and grace and, uh, from Jesus Christ based on what he did from the, on the cross. So it's a message that appeals to a lot of people, even though it's anti-women in some ways. At one point, the, the Gospel of Thomas consists of 114 sayings, supposedly, by Jesus, and one of them is to say, uh, says that you know that uh, no woman is worthy of heaven. The only way that you can get in for a woman is to become like a male, and uh, you know so it's not particularly pro women like a lot of uh, people assume that these quote unquote Gnostic gospels are. Uh, the problem with the Gospel of Thomas and and these other gospels, first of all, is when are they dated? Now, it's, it's intuitively obvious that the closer to the events you have something, uh, the more likely it is they're going to be historically reliable. And so when we look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see early dates for these books, that they were written close enough to the events that they can be trusted historically. And yet, the efforts by historians to date Thomas and all these other Gospels early as the Gospels we have in the Bible just fall flat. And the truth is, they're dated most likely second half of the second century and later. 
Well, that's a long time after the fact. I mean, that's like saying that um, you know Abraham Lincoln in 1865 in the Civil War. It's like me writing something today, you know, based on my perception of what kind of happened back then. Um, it'd be the same kind of time distance than as it would for people in the second half of the second century writing about Jesus. And besides which, these people had an agenda. They were Gnostics. They didn't really care about the resurrection. They, were, they didn't really care that much if Jesus rose from the dead. They cared about this, this um, 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 secret knowledge that he was imparting only to those who were worthy, only to those who were smart enough to get it. It's a very, um, this isn't the message of grace. Well, you know, the message of the Bible is God offers forgiveness and eternal life to anyone who comes to him in repentance and faith. You know, the message of Thomas is, yeah, you smart enough? You got the secret knowledge? You got the little key to unlock that little divine spark, huh? Well, maybe you can get in. That's a works-based 